Aloha everyone, I am Ashley Terrell, your orientation leader for today's session, First Year Programs. Before we get started, I'll be covering some housekeeping items for today's webinar. First, you should be able to hear me clearly. If you cannot, please note that in the chat box so we may troubleshoot with you. Simple fixes include connecting your audio on the Zoom window, turning up your computer volume, or using external headphones. Second, please utilize the Q&A function if you have questions for the presenters or about what was shared. For most sessions, all questions will be saved for the end of the presentation. Additionally, participants in the chat are asked to be respectful of others and stay focused on the topic of this webinar so those with questions can easily be seen. Finally, after the session, we will be uploading the recording of this webinar to the Visit Days platform in the video section. All recordings will have closed captioning. Now, I would like to welcome and introduce today's presenters, Dr. Kyle Van Duzer, Director of First Year Programs and Justin Nguyen. With that, I'll turn the presentation over to Dr. Kyle Van Duzer. Thanks so much, Ashley. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Kyle Van Duzer. I serve as the Director of First Year Programs, and I've been with the university for over nine years. Uh, Justin, do you want to introduce yourself for a moment? Hi everyone, my name is uh, Justin Nguyen and I am a student coordinator and peer mentor here at First Year Programs. I've been with the program for about one and a half years now, so yeah. Great. So for today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, tips and tricks to succeed in college. Uh, but before I kind of talk, I really want to kind of get a feel for how, how you're feeling, essentially. And so um, if you could just kind of put in the chat box, um, you know, how are you feeling about starting college? So we have excited, we have someone's feeling good, nervous, nervous. Yeah, these are all very kind of normal you know, and it's completely understandable. Nervous but excited. Okay, we'll wait just another minute or so or 30 seconds or so for people to put, put in their responses. Okay, yeah, so, you know, I think when I started college way back when, I kind of felt the same way, and it's, it's very common, I think, to feel, you know, both very excited and very good, but also kind of nervous and anticipating about, like, what is exactly going to happen, um, and hopefully today's, you know, presentation will kind of put some context for you and prepare you a little bit more for moving forward. So, my academic journey, I think, was a bit unique unique. Um, when I first went to college, uh, I essentially was, you know, it was just one more step. Uh, I think I, I like to tell the story before I get into the tips and tricks because it provides context. Um, so like I said, when I first started college, I just, I was excited about it, but I was at the same time, I don't know if I was necessarily that focused. Uh, I just felt like it was one more thing I had to do. You know, you go to college to get a job and, you know, da 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 da. Uh, essentially though, so I didn't really take it very seriously when I first entered college, um, and I really struggled, you know, and I, I it showed at least academically I was struggling. I think I had, by the end of my freshman year, like a 1.7 cumulative GPA. So it's like, wow, why are we listening to this guy who, you know, struggled so much? <laughs> what tips and tricks does he have? But, you know, I, I ended up turning it around, and um, I, I went through some personal challenges, and I realized, you know, what, what am I really doing with my life? And I want to get focused and, and succeed and make the most of my life and then turn around and help the community. So I went from basically a, a 1.7 cumulative GPA to then having the very next semester 4.0 and getting on the dean's list every single consecutive. I went from getting a letter from the dean saying you're on academic probation, you're going to be kicked out, to the very next semester being on the dean's list, which is actually a good thing, saying, wow, we are celebrating your academic achievement. You're doing such a good job. I still have those letters somewhere. I should, I should find them just because they're so close together. And there were a number of things that I did that really helped me uh, get focused and I think be successful. And then I you know, finished my bachelor's degree 
went on to finish my master's degree right out of, you know, finishing my undergraduate and then finished my PhD a couple of years ago. And I work as a tenured faculty and I'm actually considered to be senior in my ranking here at the university. So it's, it's been a while, you know, since I've entered college, but nonetheless, um, I hopefully this will, this will help. So here are essentially some of the tips and tricks that I found helpful when I was going through my journey and kind of how I use this framework in, in how I lead first year programs at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So these are just kind of five basic tips and uh, tips and tricks here. So the first is picking interesting classes. Um, you know, when I, I remember I took this class, I think back in the day, it was called business communications. And that's not to say business communications at UH is bad. It's just this was when I went to Cal State Northridge. It really did not perk my interest at all. I really struggled with it. Um, it was hard to do the readings. It was hard to be engaged. Uh, one of the beautiful things about, you know, in that transition from high school to college is you're really fully in control of your schedule. You get to decide what you study. So I would strongly encourage you um, to pick an interesting class, something that really kind of you read the class abstract, you think the subject matter kind of perks your interest because you're going to be spending considerable time doing the readings, listening to lectures, and nothing is more difficult than sitting through something that you really have no interest in. You can only fake it for so long. So that's kind of one of, the, one of my first tips is find, look through the course catalog, you know, think of a subject that you might like, maybe something you, you know, haven't necessarily thought about before and include that in your schedule uh, because those are the classes you're really gonna excel in because they're gonna spark your interest. You're gonna be more likely to be engaged in that. Uh, the second, I think, and this is in no particular order. I know I'm listing them one, two, three, four, five, but I, I just want to kind of emphasize here that I, I wouldn't say that this is in any particular order. I think all of these are very crucial and important. And, and this one, especially, um, building peer relationships are so key. Uh, really, it's about having someone who can help you be accountable. Uh, if you miss a class, they can be like, oh, well, why did you miss? Or what's going on? Or can I share my notes? Or, or vice versa, you can study together. You know, some of the most formidable friendships I have now are from friends that I made in college. And this is kind of anecdotal, but I think it's kind of, kind of a socially accepted thing that, you know, this is a great time to network, to build lifelong friends. So really take advantage of it. One of the great things about college that, you know, when you get into later chapters of your life, you realize that this is one of the last times that people are entering something collectively as a whole and a large group as completely new, a new experience. It's not too common that you get a large group of people entering a new experience and this is all a first time experience for them. So everyone, you know, in this presentation today is a first time student, um, at least at the University of Hawaii at Manoa going into college here. And, you know, so essentially I would really take advantage of that. And even if you're nervous and you feel kind of socially awkward, the secret is your person who you may be forming a relationship probably feels the same way, you know, and, and that's okay. And so again, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to build, build positive peer relationships. And I use that word positive intentionally too. Okay, um, so sliding on here. So the next I have is uh, speaking with faculty during class and during office hours. Um, you know, you're, all the faculty here, we're all human too. Uh, you know, sometimes we can, there's this whole notion of the ivory tower, or whatever that may be. But it's, it's really crucial to essentially make those connections because your faculty may be your letter of recommendations uh, later down the line. Um, you know, I teach here a couple different classes. I teach statistics, I teach um, a leadership class, and I can't tell you the amount of letters of recommendation I've written for medical school, for graduate programs, for jobs, um, and many of them have gone on to be very successful, and I'm very proud of the students, and, they, and, and happy that I was able to be a part of their journey, but it's really important that you form those relationships both with your peers, but also your faculty, too. And when you have that, you know, the, even though there's an objective rubric when faculty grade, you know, as someone who's a faculty and I teach myself, I can tell you that if you have, you know, a student who is maybe really struggling, but shows effort and shows care, you're gonna work with that student to help them be successful. And, and there's an investment that you have as a mentor, as a leader, as a teacher, 
to invest in, you know, those who you're helping, right? Because if you do poorly and you're trying your hardest and you're reaching out to us as faculty, then that reflects very poorly on us. So we're very much, you know, when you think about classes and your journey here at UH Manoa, it's very much a partnership um, where you're going to have to put in work and we're going to meet you where you're at and try and help you grow uh, holistically. So I can't, again, really important, even though it may seem intimidating, but definitely speak with faculty, uh, you know, during class, ask questions, um, you know, visit them during office hours. That's what we're paid here, you know, to do. Um, if you are taking online classes, you know, which most of you, I think, will have at least one or two, if not potentially more, uh, because we're still recovering from COVID. Uh, really, it's so crucial that you have your video on during lectures. This is so crucial. I've had, you know, some of my best friends now are professors at the university, and we always talk just you know, casually amongst ourselves and are like, man, it's, it's so hard to, because we, you know, teaching is a very uh, kind of emotional aspect where you read the audience, you read the class, if something's not clicking. And again, it gets to creating those type of relationships where it's like that human connection that, you know, I think everyone kind of needs. And so if, if you're, if the video is off, there's no sense of like being able to gauge, are you actually getting it? Are you not getting it? And it's, it's kind of a rude thing, you know, I think just generally speaking. So, um, you know, it, it goes, there's, there is a participation, I think that counts usually for 10 to 15% of most grades in college. And just simply having your video on uh, during lectures can really just give you all those participation points. And at the end of the day, you're paying good money or your caregivers are paying good money for you to uh, take the most of it. So please, that's something I would encourage you to do. Um, so I want to tell a story. I like to tell stories and Justin works in my office so they have to put up with my shenanigans and my stories. But um, so a couple years back, this was in 2011. So this was a while ago now. Um, I tore my meniscus while I was in graduate school and that's a, a ligament in your knee and you know football players often tear their ACLs or it was very painful it was awful um, I did it while surfing and I had to like walk really far and I was by myself and so side note don't surf by yourself that's you know especially or swim by yourself in Hawaii because uh, <laughs> if you get hurt you're you're in trouble so Essentially, I, I had this horrible experience. I tore my meniscus. I couldn't walk for almost a whole year. And I would always joke around with my surgeon. And, you know, before I had surgery, I was super nervous. And I was like, did you get a good night's sleep? Did you eat breakfast? How are you feeling? And mind you, she'd probably done like, you know, 20,000 of these surgeries or so. And she was like, and she said to me, I'll never, right as I was falling asleep, and I'm like, are you good? And she's like, oh, Kyle, I haven't, she's like, I haven't done my reading. Cause I said, she'd asked me how my school's going. I'm like, oh, I don't really do my readings that often or whatever. And she's like, oh, don't worry, Kyle. I'll, I'll catch up on my, uh, my meniscus pair readings during my lunch break before I perform surgery on you. And she said that to me right as I was falling asleep. You know, there's a, there's a bit of a sense of humor in that, but you know, there was a bit of established relationship, so it's okay. But I, I say that in all seriousness, because you're here in college, you need to do the readings. Um, it's just part of it. You're, you're in your learning journey. And to try and, you know, I think in high school, there's a long time ago for me, but what I can remember is you could get by without doing the readings and you could just kind of sk skim through. But here you, you're going to be expected. You, there may be things that you're quizzed on that you don't even um, are never discussed in class. They're never discussed, especially if you're in those bio or chem classes and so essentially you really do have to do the readings and they're being assigned for a reason. And even though it seems like a lot, remember you're supposed to spend um, one, I think it's like two or three hours for, for every one hour you spent in class is that's supposed to be the breakdown. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. So on that notion, we do have a common read program. Um, last year, we did the great influenza. That was our inaugural year. And a lot of the faculty and I kind of worked together. So like I, I worked with like your English 100 faculty or your bio 171 or your chemistry faculty or um, your communicology, you know, for COMG 151. So there's a lot of faculty that are actually participating in this pilot program that we're doing called, um, called the common read. 
And essentially it's kind of help you understand that you can, you know, bridges between disciplines. So the book this year is called Braiding Sweetgrass uh, by Robin Kimmer. And it's really good. And so essentially, you know, when they sign it, I again, encourage you to read it. Um, there will be some co-curricular lectures about it, but with all things, you know, if your instructors assign things, you know, please do read it. You can actually access this book for free online through the UH library, so you don't have to buy anything. It's a free textbook available to you as a student. Okay, so my last kind of main piece of advice here is um, getting involved in campus. And there's been, you know, I have a PhD, it's in education. I've taken lots of classes on stats. I, I look at like trend analysis a lot on retention and graduation trends here at the university and also nationally as well too. And one of the biggest things that we see in all of these things essentially is really engagement. This notion of the more you invest, the more you engage in your undergraduate experience, the more likely you are to go on and be successful. And so us as a university, we believe in you collectively. We know you can do it. And we know one of the you know, main ways is for you to get engaged and getting involved on campus is a great way to get engaged into your educational experience. We have so many different clubs, so many different, um, I think, I, I can't even think of the number of clubs off the top of my head. I know it's over like 150 um, different registered independent organizations. We have the fitness center. We, this is going to be really awesome this year with the football campus, you know, the football games being in person. That's super exciting. I'm really stoked for that. And I'm going to bring my son to that. So um, there's really so many ways to get involved on campus. Um, and, you know, everyone has different interests. So just follow your interests. And if you have, if you think of something, I'm sure there's a way, whether it be a seminar or lecture, or whatever it may be for you to get involved on campus. Um, so with that being said, I want to kind of transition just a little bit here um, in what First Year Programs does and what we offer as an office and a department. So I've, I've given my five kind of tips, which is, you know, selecting classes, uh, building peer relationships, doing reading, getting involved on campus, and then what was my other one? Uh, reading, picking interesting classes, building peer relationships, speaking with faculty, um, and then again, getting involved on campus. So I wanna talk just for a, a moment about what first year programs and, and what we do. So what we offer are um, uh, really two things. One is the academic learning communities. So some are, unfortunately our registration window has already closed for that. So, um, but if you wanted to be a, reach out and participate in learning community, you know, we could help provide you the CRNs or the schedule. So you could try and sign up for the classes on your own. We can't register you through our portal anymore, but we could help you essentially sign up for the same exact classes so you would be a part of a learning community. And what that is, is groups of 15 students who share the same common core classes and you go from class to class to class all semester long. And the idea is, is that you, that's how you build those academic and social relationships. Um, you know, if for whatever reason the classes, you haven't signed up for classes yet, or, you, or we can't get you into those, you know, learning community classes, that's not to worry. We offer what's called UNIV 110. It's called University. Yes, that is awesome. That's an ACE cluster. Um, so UNIV 110 is one of the connecting links um, in the class, and it's led by an undergraduate peer mentor, someone like Justin, or we have Hannah, or all of our peer mentors. And they're basically a junior, senior class standing, and they go over, you know, what it takes to really be successful in college. The class is a writing intensive, so we're really excited about that because that's something new. So not only is it like an elective base, but you also are knocking out your uh, general education requirements, as well as, you know, uh, getting to make new friends. And the class, the whole purpose of the class is really to help you just be successful and form academic and social relationships. Because we know, or I know at least, as someone oversees the curriculum, that that's absolutely critical. So you'll go on like cluster outings or like, you know, UNIV 110 outings where your mentor may take you on a hike or, you know, may all go to some type of scoring event, but you talk about it as a class. So, you know, you, you collaborate as a class and say, okay, is this something that we all want to do? And it's very inclusive. You know, that's the main thing is we're, we're very inclusive. So if you miss the opportunity to uh, sign up for, okay, yeah, so it's okay. So if you've missed the opportunity to sign up for 
than ancillary committee, you can still sign up for UNIV 110. So the way you would do that is you go to our website, uh, manoa.ya.edu backslash undergrad backslash freshman. There is a link at the top that basically says, um, you know, sign up for UNIV 110. And I think it may be worthwhile if I do that right now. Would that be helpful if I kind of just went through how to sign up for it? Yeah. Okay, let me go ahead and um, stop share for just a second here um, and pull up an internet browser. Okay. I'm just pulling up the browser. Okay, so now I can share my screen here. Okay, oh, you can all see that, yeah. Okay, great. So this is our homepage here, um, and you can learn a little bit more about you know the services we offer. But I think for as it relates to this presentation, the main thing that you can still sign up for that we encourage you to do today, if you haven't, if you've already signed up for an ACE cluster, you know you can disregard this next little piece. If you haven't signed up for an ACE cluster, then I would strongly encourage you to sign up for uh, our UNIV 110 class. And uh, that's led again by an undergraduate peer mentor. Uh, some of the core curriculum is like financial literacy, uh, information literacy, um, you know, ways of getting engaged on campus, um, familiarizing yourself with career development, uh, familiarizing yourself more with the kind of academic climate and so the way you would sign up for that essentially is you go on our website right here, there's a link, fall 21. And then, oh, look at that superstar right there, Justin. He helped us out in the video a couple of years ago. Um, and so basically it just says, your, put your name, you know, um, your, and then, you know, what's your preferred day. And so we're doing our best to map your preferred day. Would you like to be online or in person? Our, our push is for it to be in person, but we know some people may feel a little bit more comfortable with, um, with it being uh, online. And so we're trying our best to accommodate that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's in essence, the, uh, you know, kind of summarizes what I have to talk about today. What I think I would like to, you know, go into a little bit is, you know, I'm a little bit further removed from my undergraduate experience. But Justin is a junior right now. Um, and so or technically maybe senior, right? <laughs> I won't get it twisted, Justin, okay. He's, he's a senior. And Justin, what was it like, I think, for you coming in through the program, you know, um, as, a, as a freshman, how were you feeling when you started your journey and, and what was it like going through ACE? So um, the way I found out through ACE was I got emails about early registration um, and I didn't really know how to register for classes um, coming into college. So I ended up registering for, uh, I think it was an oceanography cluster. Um, and then it was a really small class. I was fortunate enough to have a small class because I really, I'm really kind of like tight knit. Um, it was me and two other people, my mentor. Um, and being an out of state student, I really didn't know anybody in Hawaii. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be a part of ACE. And, my, my peers in the course um, in the program, they're also from California, which is where I'm from. So we had that bond um, and it's really tight knit, you know? Um, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to stay at the University of Hawaii, to be honest with you guys, when I first started off here. Um, and, you know, now I'm graduating this upcoming fall um, early, right? Um, and I wanted to drop out when it first came around, honestly, because I wanted beers on the first week. I was like, man, it sucks, you know, I have no family here. And, you know, um, the program, it's, I think it's really, it was really helpful for me being an out-of-state student and having these set number of courses, especially the, back then it was called CAS 110, now it's UNIV 110. Um, it's showing you different life skills, right? Financial literacy is one of them, talking about student loans and credit cards, you know? Um, yeah, that was my experience. And now, now getting hired as a student coordinator uh, my second year here by Kyle, working in the office. That gave me another perspective of what, of what goes into um, being a peer mentor 
and then I later got hired as a peer mentor. Um, and then being able to teach online, you know, and meeting first year students, helping them out and seeing myself in their shoes. I think that was really helpful for me last year during my third year, you know, now I'm becoming back again as a peer mentor and doing it again, you know, so yeah. Awesome, yeah, thanks Justin. And I think the, you know, and just expanding on what Justin said, it's, it, even if you're from on island, right? Um, uh, we have a lot of people coming from neighbor islands. We have a lot of students coming from on island. You're still in a, a completely new environment. And so you're going to go from class, class, class. Um, and it's, it's very, um, you know, it's a new, it, it can be overwhelming. It can be, you know, intimidating. And so our goal is to just make, we want you to be as successful as possible. And so we're going to help you every single step of the way. Um, and really, I think the, the peer mentor is a critical role in that. Um, and Justin has done an outstanding job. And we have a whole team, you know, every year there are so many students. I think I get like 150, 170 applicants for like 17 spots. And then the mentors typically, typically want to return also. So you're really getting students who are very altruistic and who want to help and are just there to serve as a, as a sounding board. And, you know, they're great facilitators. So when you're, you know, kind of nervous, they can pick up on that. Your peers may be nervous also. Um, and again, you know, we do see a lot of students, you know, whether you're from a neighbor island or from out of state, it can be really isolating. Um, and even if you're from in-state also, it can be, you know, kind of isolating, especially with COVID now. So having that tight-knit group is really, um, it makes a huge difference. Um, and your desire to stay. And we know that, you know, getting a college degree equates, it's not the only reason to come to college, but a major reason is for economic prosperity and getting a college degree is one of the, you know, best ways to increase your potential earnings over time. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna open the floor up to questions either to myself or Justin. Um, Austin has, what does it take to be a student coordinator? Well, I'm always looking for new talent. You know, uh, I have a lot of great students and it's always bittersweet as a faculty because you get to know them and work with them and you see them grow and develop and then they go on to the next chapter. And so I'm always excited for them, but you know, you kind of grow accustomed to working with them. So we're always looking for new uh, students. I think the biggest thing is an eagerness um, and you know, we're always hiring. And so you, if you are interested, you could always send an email to freshmen at hawaii.edu and we could talk later about that. Um, in terms of, yeah, so again, uh, I really encourage you to sign up for um, a UNIV 110 class if you haven't already signed up for an ACE cluster. And so I, I would like to open the floor up to questions now. Perfect, Kyle, and I will just facilitate those from the Q&A. So let's get started on that. So um, what the first question is, can they still sign up for an ACE cluster? Okay, so that's a great question. So um, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of, it's yes and no. So unfortunately, no, not through our portal, you cannot sign up for an ACE cluster anymore. Um, you can sign up for University 110, which is a part of all the clusters. And so I would encourage you to do that today. Uh, because, you know, we do fill up and we're closer to capacity. So, no, you can't sign up for an ACE cluster. That being said, we can assist you if you if you see a cluster on our website, which we still have the clusters up, that you say, oh, this cluster 15 or cluster 20 or whatever it may be looks appealing to you. We can't put you in through our portal, but we can share with you the CRNs. A CRN, a CRN, if you don't know what that is, is a unique identifier for every single class. Every single class you take has a CRN, which is a unique identifier. So we can share the CRNs with you and either myself, Justin, or Hannah, who also works in the office but isn't here today, um, can basically meet with you and go over how to sign up for the classes that essentially match the ACE cluster. So even though you wouldn't have signed up through our portal, you could, in theory, sign up on your own for the exact same classes and be a part of the cluster. Now, I don't have any control as to whether or not those classes have filled up. Maybe you get two out of the three classes, maybe you get four out of the five or two of the four, whatever that may be. So the technical answer is no, we can't 
register you through our portal, but we can kind of bypass that by sharing the CRNs with you. I hope that answers the question. And can you go over, Kyle, what the clusters are? Are there special topics of each cluster? Like what are those, you sure. know, what's one cluster over another cluster? Yeah, and I know I kind of skipped through that a little bit today because of the registration being closed. So um, like I said, a cluster is a group of 15 students or less that basically go from class to class to class all semester long. Um, tied to pretty much all the clusters is the UNIV 110 class. Now the clusters are themed based off of um, major or academic interest. So one cluster may be a pre-business major like a pre-business. And so basically what we do is we work with all your academic advisors. So if you're interested in majoring in business per se, we've already worked with your academic advisor and your academic advisor said, hey Kyle, uh, you know, first time pre-business student should take econ, communicology, English, you know, et cetera. And um, then I say, okay. And so I package those classes together based off of whatever the major theme is, whether that be business or life sciences or nursing, or, you know, we have a general exploratory and, and that is in essence the cluster. Um, each, uh, I don't control the content of what goes in all those classes. Let's say for the pre-business, I have no say, your economics professor would, would know like what goes into the class curriculum there. Um, I just package the classes together for students um, so they can take the classes. And so essentially you have the same group of students from your UNIV 110 class, in your English 100 class, in your econ class, and you're going throughout all semester long with the same group of students. And they're formed based off of your major. So if you're business or if you're biology or if you're nursing or whatever that may be, uh, yeah. Great. And is there a fee or anything else in order to participate or sign up? No, that's a great question. No, it's completely free. We're built into the university, whether you utilize us or not. Um, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, we're completely just here and you don't have to pay any fee. We're already built into your natural tuition. So all the more reason, right, to, to take advantage of us. I do want to add one more thing that I forgot in my presentation. From a researcher perspective, like I said, I teach statistics and I do a lot of research for the university. Um, we do see, you know, that students who participate in UNIV 110 and or the clusters do perform better academically compared to students who don't perform, you know, participate in the cluster. And they also have higher retention rates. So we've done both qualitative and quantitative research and we can actually statistically prove that, hey, if you participate in this program, you're, you're gonna perform better than had you not chosen to participate in the program. So that's just, I like to kind of add that in there. But to your question, we are completely free. We're no additional cost to you. Great. And are there any requirements to being in UNIV 110? No, it's a, it's a um, no, it's a completely open class. Um, you don't have to have any previous requirements. Again, we do fulfill that writing intensive general education requirement. So that's something that's kind of a benefit is you knock out already one of your called WI writing intensive requirements. But no, you don't, there are no prereqs. You can just sign up and we're excited to have you. Um, and if they do want to register for UNIV 110, do, can they, do, if they do that on STAR, do they also have to register on your website or is one or the other? No, I, um, it's, it's usually, they can do it through STAR. Uh, my only thing is, is that um, star, like, okay, so we have, we would encourage you to do it through our portal rather than through STAR, um, just because we have some clusters that we are going to, some sections that will be closed and you're not, and we have, you know, we just do that because of personnel and staffing. Sometimes we don't, uh, we have, you know, personnel issues or whatever it may be. So you're not on, when you see it through STAR, you're not seeing what sections we may close. Um, so we advise you to please do it through the first year program's website. So now, so if somebody today wanted to get into UNIV 110, they would go through your website? Yeah, I okay. mean, in theory, you could definitely do it through STAR, but um, you know, 
if you do, if you were to do both, you know, we, we sign up the UNIV 110 students in like a week or two is when we'll put them actually into their star. So if you, if you did star on your own, we would just, you know, we, we can't double register you for the same class. Um, but if we do for us, we just ask, usually it's easier for us if you do it through our portal, but if you, if you want, you could do it through star. Okay. Okay. And, um, one of the last questions is what are other programs or events that your office offers for first year students? Well, I think for us, our main kind of classes or what we're really doing is, is building out the UNIV 110. So each mentor, um, and so that's our kind of, I'd say, gateway into the office. And I, don't, I don't know if I like that word gateway, but bridge, I think, into the office, because once you registered for that class, then the mentor specifically will do programs on a weekly basis and, you know, provide social opportunities for you. And also, if they're not doing something in a way of offering a, a program for you, then um, they are connecting you with already existing programs. And you may not hear about it, right? Because there's so many things, it's easy to kind of get lost. So they can kind of meet with you more on individual level and be like, oh, what are your interests? Oh, did you know about this? Did you know about this? They're kind of like a campus wizard for you. So I would say the bridge really for all the programming of first year programs is really through UNIV 110. Um, we do do the common read, which is open to everyone, and we're still developing the uh, co-curricular lecture series at this time. Great. I think that is all of our active questions right now. Again, if any of our participants have questions, please enter them into the chat. I'm sorry, into the Q&A so that we can get those answered for you. Um, any questions about ACE programs or first year programs? If you have any specific questions, you can just enter them there. If you want it to be anonymous, you can just click the anonymous button and we will not see who's asking the question. So feel free to do that as well if you'd like that option. Oh, this actually, Kyle, this question actually came up from another person, I believe, a couple um, sessions ago. But is there a final for UNIV 110? Oh, my God, that's the deal breaker, right? Oh, whew, that's the deal breaker. Is there a final for UNIV 110? No, I don't really believe in finals myself, per se. Um, no, there's not a final. Uh, we do have, so the class meets for like 12 or 13 weeks. A typical class will meet for 16 weeks. We actually end, this is something I should have said earlier, but no, we end early um, intentionally so you can allow you more time to, to study for your other exams. Um, and we are very cognizant of that because we want to lift you up and support you. So no, we don't have a final. Uh, there is a you know, there is a, a scholarship paper. So we know finances are so crucial. And even if you have your college all the way paid for, you know, congratulations, that's awesome. But most students don't. And so one of the main projects of the class is we actually teach you how to navigate through the, you know, thousands of potential scholarships through the STAR website. Um, and then you write a personal statement. So in, in thinking at the end of this, by the end of the 12 weeks, you would have already been ready to submit three scholarship applications. Um, you know, and we've had students, you, and now we don't force you to submit them, but you know, we're just, that's one of the things is we want you, you know, a lot of students don't know how to use scholarships or write a personal statement. And most of the mentors have received one, if not have their whole college paid for by scholarships. So uh, that is a kind of key thing of the class um, even if you don't, let's say, uh, if your college is paid for, still learning how to write to things and ask for money in a technical way is a skill set that you will use far beyond college um, in any public job or even in private enterprise. So it's still a very valuable skill set, I think, even if you're not necessarily applying for financial aid. Um, but no, so that, that's the closest thing we have to final, but that's an iterative paper that you work on throughout the course of the semester. A couple more questions about the logistics of the UNIV 110 class. Um, so the first one is about the meeting time. So uh, is it, what does it equate to as far as how many hours a week are the classes meeting? And 
is it Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Like, what yeah. does that work out to be? That's a great question. And I'm, I'm so glad these questions are asked because I, I, these things kind of skip my mind when I'm, you know, giving this presentation. So it meets once a week for 50 minutes and once a week for 50 minutes. Now your mentors may have some type of social gathering that's, you know, that's optional or whatever outside of that one week meeting, but no, it's once a week for 50 minutes. And then um, it's a one credit class. We, this is our first year doing the writing intensive. So we may up the credits in the future year, um, but right now it's just a one credit writing intensive. And as I understand it for general education requirements and Justin, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, for the writing intensive, it doesn't matter whether it's a one credit or three credit. You just have to have so many classes that are writing intensive. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. That's Yeah, so it doesn't, even though it's one credit, you still have to have so many classes that are designated as writing intensive. So we fulfill that need. And um, somebody, it looks like, has already signed up for UNIV 110 on their STAR registration. Should they drop that and register through your website or what should their actions be? No, just if it's if they're already signed up, just being aware of it, you know, um, again, we, uh, you know, we're working just to provide some like uh, administrative context. Uh, we have you know, 17 or 19 peer mentors, all of whom are very successful and have their own academic schedules. So we're kind of playing, a, you know, big game of Tetris, where, um, you know, if you sign up for one that maybe we weren't intention, you know, if we weren't intending on filling it, um, we will manually just move you on star and let you know, hey, we had to move you to a different section number. Hopefully it doesn't disrupt, you know, we're not, we can see your schedule from a bird's eye view, but so long story short, if you're already registered in STAR, just, just leave it just like that. You don't sign up through our portal. Um, we can, we're, yeah, there's, it would be duplicate efforts at that point. So just leave it as is. And if there needs to be any changes, we will contact you and let you know, but most likely it should be okay. It should be fine. There's, a, there's another related question that kind of came in about this. Um, and somebody asked, is it guaranteed a space for UNIV 110? Uh, is everyone guaranteed a space? I initially was thinking that, you know, the sections fill up, right, Kyle? There's not, a, there's not an unlimited amount of sections. But is there anything else to add to that? Or is that correct? No, I mean, at this point, like as of today, like, you know, if you were to if you were to sign up today, we, we have a space for you. Now, if it's like two days after the semester started, it's gonna be, it's harder. I mean, we do our best to accommodate everyone. We try and be very inclusive. You know, it's one of the values of the office, but you know, don't, don't delay on it because th there may come a point where we can't accommodate you. And there are certain requirements that we have to meet for accreditation standards with, you know, limiting the number of students in the class, you know, for that writing intensive. So. As of today, if you sign up today, we can guarantee a spot for you. And Kyle, is the UNIV 110 section, is it led by a student mentor or is there just one in the room? Is it co-taught? What does that look like? That's a great question. So, you know, um, so to answer the question directly, it's led independently by a mentor. So I, I create and develop all the curriculum and then I, my mentors go through very rigorous training and then they, they lead the sections. And once in a while, I'll drop in on them, make sure that everything's doing fine, you know. Um, but no, it's led independently by a mentor. So Justin would actually be the section leader and it would be unlikely that, you know, I, of course I'm always available, but they would be a primary contact of first year programs. Um, some faculty, you know, some universities have it like a hybrid model or where it just it's an instructor who teaches the UNIV 110 class at like, you know, let's say Cal State Northridge or, you know, uh, Oregon or wherever. But we've actually done a lot of research and we found that the peer mentor model is very effective for us because there's more of a um, more of a connection. You know, it's, it's someone who's, who is, has been in your shoes very recently and it's a greater connection. And I think it's a smoother transition for you. So our model that we really swear by and the bread and butter that we swear by as an office is the peer mentor or independently leading the sections. And I think you'll benefit from that. And you'll see why once you're in the class as to the tempo and the dynamic and, you know, every class has its own social dynamic. And so, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thank you.
we'll do a last call for questions. Any other questions any of our participants have, you can enter them into the Q&A. And remember, you can click that anonymous button if you want your name to be blocked, but happy to have any questions that our part participants have. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation. We hope that you gained some helpful information from Dr. Calvin Duzer and Justin Nguyen. If you have further questions or questions that were not discussed, please email your OL or nrwo at hawaii.edu for assistance. As mentioned, this webinar will be published on the NSO platform, so please visit that page for the recording as well as links or documents mentioned by today's guests. Mahalo!